Importance of Nutrition in Preterm Babies Preterm babies are at increased risk for poor growth during their stay in NICU as well as after discharge. Hence, special attention should be given to feeding of preterm babies starting soon after birth. In this webinar, we shall learn the recommended nutritional goals for preterm babies, what is meant by the term extrauterine growth restriction, and the short and long term adverse effects of extrauterine growth restriction. What is the recommended nutritional goal for preterm babies? Actually, preterm infants have greater nutritional needs to achieve optimal growth in the neonatal period than at any other time in life. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that extrauterine growth of preterm babies should parallel the intrauterine growth of a fetus in utero of a comparable gestational age. However, there are certain inherent limitations of VLBW babies which interfere with achievement of this goal. These include issues related to prematurity per se, like limited nutritional stores because they are born early, immature metabolic pathways and osmolar limitations for metabolism of glucose and amino acids, immaturity of the gastrointestinal tract, incoordination of suck, swallow, breathe cycle as a result of which very preterm babies cannot suckle directly at the breast, they cannot be put to the breast immediately. Added to this are the catabolic effects of illness due to associated problems like RDS, sepsis, apnea, all of which actually also interfere and cause growth retardation. And finally, there is also an increased requirement for nutrient intake needed for rapid growth. Hence, the preterm baby is very likely to develop cumulative deficits in protein and energy resulting in slower growth. Thus, a larger proportion of VLBW babies develop postnatal growth failure and are also known as extra uterine growth restriction. This is defined as the weight of a baby below the 10th centile at 36 weeks of gestational age or at the time of discharge. Now, extra uterine growth restriction is associated with several problems. This would include short term or immediate issues like increased risk of retinopathy of prematurity, increased risk of chronic lung disease, poor bone health also called osteopenia of prematurity or metabolic bone disease. Then there could also be long term problems which include blindness due to ROP, adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes and lower final weight and height at the age of 20 years of age. In addition, there could also be what is called the adult metabolic syndrome. Now, let us try to understand these risks a little more in detail. Increased risk of retinopathy of prematurity. Now, studies have shown that an increased risk of ROP type 1, this is the severe form of retinopathy of prematurity, can occur in extremely low gestational age babies if their total caloric intake, their lipid intake, the carbohydrate intake in the first month as well as the growth velocity in these babies is in the lowest quartile. Hence, improving early nutrition in very preterm babies may help prevent the development of sight threatening ROP or ROP causing blindness. Increased risk of chronic lung disease. Now, chronic lung disease is, is a common morbidity in small preterm babies. It is related to ventilation, oxygen toxicity, and infection. Nutrition also plays an important role. Preterm babies with poor nutritional status, especially those with intrauterine growth restriction, are at greater risk for chronic lung disease and also chronic lung disease further increases the risk of poor nutritional status and postnatal growth failure and thereby there is a vicious cycle that is caused. Osteopenia of prematurity. Suboptimal supplementation with phosphorus, calcium and vitamin D result in osteopenia of prematurity which is also called metabolic bone disease. This can clinically result in an increased risk of fractures of long bones of the ribs of poor linear growth of the preterm baby as well as failure to wean the baby from the ventilator. Adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes. The preterm brain is very vulnerable to undernutrition. Erin Kranz and all in their study of 2425 VLBW babies have shown that undernutrition may permanently reduce the mental developmental index, the psychomotor development index scores with lesser scores than 70 an increased risk of cerebral palsy in those VLBW babies who have lower weight gain of 12 grams per kilogram per day compared to those babies with a weight gain in the higher quartile of 21 grams per kilogram per day. Coming to extra uterine growth retardation and lower final weight and height, prematurity and low birth weight also increase the risk of underweight, 
stunting and wasting. One study showed that at 6 months of age, 28% of the study cohort of VLBW babies showed underweight and stunting and 22% of babies had wasting. In a study by Hack, VLBW infants were twice as likely to have final height lesser than the third percentile at 20 years of age compared to normal birth weight controls. It was 10% versus 5%. Studies have also shown that babies with low weight in the neonatal period are at higher risk for coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes mellitus, hypercholesterolemia, hypertension and stroke in adulthood. This is also known as the metabolic syndrome. In conclusion, we need to remember that early enteral nutrition is important for optimal growth of preterm babies. Poor nutrition is associated with extra uterine growth restriction. Extra uterine growth restriction causes increased short term risk of retinopathy of prematurity, chronic lung disease and osteopenia of prematurity. EUGR also increases the long term risk of poor neurodevelopmental outcomes, short final height and metabolic syndrome. Thank you.